for this live special episode of Real Estate Fight Club. This is What Would You Do? And I am here with Rachel Real. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Jen. How are you? Great. So we normally will discuss like uh, professional standards and ethics committee cases. But in this case, there hasn't been an actual case yet. Do you want to give us some context for the conversation today? Yeah, so today we're going to co- talk about um, coming soons and misrepresentation of access. Mm-hmm. So there, because this particular issue is really more of a cut and dry black and white, did you go in, did you not, did you misrepresent access, did you not, there doesn't necessarily need to be a huge hearing, um, or case, I should say case studies on it. So these go to hearings all the time. I've been in several hearings for these, these types of cases over the years, um, but they don't really have case studies on these that we kind of have referenced in the past. Okay. So we're going to, we're kind of going to talk more about how this has become an issue and how coming soon affects the misrepresentation of access. Right. So give us like a story. I mean, we've all had this happen to us, right? Oh, sure. Every, every day. You you can't get in. (laughs) And then all of a sudden it's pending and you're like, gone. "How, how did anybody get in? Right. Right. So, you know, these fall under Article 3 of the Code of Ethics, which the Article 3 in and of itself says realtors shall cooperate with other brokers, except when cooperation is not in the client's best interest. The obligation to cooperate does not include the obligation to share commissions, fees, or to otherwise compensate another broker. So that's the the overall article. So in the seller's best interest is a very interesting... Right. There's not too many times I would argue that, that... cooperate that not cooperating with another agent would be in the seller's best interest. I don't see a whole lot of scenarios where that would be the case. Um, but if you boil this down a little bit more, standard of practice 3-8 and 3-9 are the ones that refer specifically to misrepresentation of availability of access or accessing on terms that are provided or accessing property on terms other than those that are established by the seller and or listing agent. So that's kind of where these fall under. When they end up going to an ethics hearing, these are the articles that they fall under. Okay, so we have a listing that's coming soon. Right. The, now, go ahead. I was going to say, let's preface this by saying that in our, the code of ethics is a national thing. So right. any, no matter where you're at, you, the code of ethics applies if you are in fact a realtor. However, every MLS and market is going to have their version of the private listing network and specific rules as to how they operate. So we're going to talk about how this particular case, a particular case here that I've experienced myself, um, how that works as it relates to our MLS. Now, I will also say that our MLS, which is Midwest Real Estate Data, um, their MLS and their rules were kind of the overall form, um, example or format that the rest of the MLSs took from. Okay. So you guys and NAR modeled their soon, NAR so. modeled their policy after okay. the one that was established here. So it's been around a while, um, but that doesn't change the fact that no one knows how to use it correctly. What I mean, are the, the use of this correctly is is just <laughs> exhausting, frightening, frustrating, you name it. <laughs> All right. What's the what are the rules then? So in, in our market here, a coming soon property can have a can be in the private network. You can have a property that is a, now we're going to also say that a private network and coming soons are not the same as an office exclusive. So let's, let's parse that out now. So an office exclusive is if Jen, you're listing a property and your seller says, I don't want to be on the MLS. I don't want to be anywhere. I only want you and your office to be able to sell my property. Okay. That's, that's different than an office or than a private listing network listing. Okay. So you say you meet with a seller and your seller says, Hey, I want to, I'm going to go on the market. Uh, I need to take, you need to do your photos. I need to have it cleaned. I need to do my carpets, this, that, and the other thing. So what you're then going to do is put it on the private network okay. and you can market in our list, in our MLS, one of two ways. So there's a field that says, can you share this with clients? Okay. So as I'm looking at it as, a, as another agent, can I share this with my clients? Yes or no. And when it says, can you share this with clients? It means, can I email it to them? Can I screenshot it? Can I even tell them about it? If the answer to that is no. A house up that you can't tell your clients about. The only benefit I can see to that is for at least me to be able to let other agents know that this seller is now under an exclusive listing agreement. So no other, no other agent then can go and go and 
solicit them for their listing. Okay. So it protects me in a certain way because if I'm going to not be able to market it yet because we're pending photos, paint, carpet, those kind of things, I don't want somebody else to swoop in there and take that listing from me. Okay. but So it kind of puts everybody on notice that says this listing is no longer available. Okay. For you to solicit. That's really the only benefit I see to the private network. Yeah. Because it sounds really stupid. Right. Otherwise, why would I bother? Right. But if I have to, on the flip side, if I sign a listing agreement and I don't want it in the, on the MLS yet, and I don't do this, and I'm waiting two weeks, my listing shows up as 14 days on the market to start. Oh, okay. So this is the only way to kind of keep that from, keep you from being in violation of the MLS rules for holding on to it and oh dating. Oh my God. Market. I when know. I, and try I'm to sorry. explain this to a seller. And when you try to explain this to a seller, it's like- It's just, a lot. Right. They don't need to know all the behind the counter baloney that we have to deal with. We just need to be able to explain to them why do we have to do it this way. Well, when um, when you guys elect me, Zara, real estate of the world. <laughs> We're going to change all this. I'll make this easy. I know. Okay. Anyway. Right. Okay. So it can, can it be shared with clients? Yes or no? If exactly. the answer is yes, then great. Go ahead and pick up your phone, call your buyer and say, hey, there's this new listing coming soon. Well, can I see it? Well, no. then I have to check that second field that says, can this be shown? Yes or no? So for instance, if a, if a listing says, can I share it? The answer is no. Obviously, if you can't share it, how are you going to show it? Right, right, right. So right. those kind of go one, yes, one of the same. Share it, then it's like, no, you can't show it. Right. So I can at least say to my client, hey, there's one coming up soon. I'm going to keep tabs on it. Maybe it's the perfect house for them on paper and they don't right. want to move on something else because they know that one's coming. Yeah. At least it allows me to have that conversation. Okay. So... When, when you have a property that comes up that says you cannot share this with clients and you cannot show it, there is no reason whatsoever that that property should be selling before, sold before processing the only or sold way, while printing or whatever, however you want to work. Here's it. what I was thinking. So like if it was up there as you can't share it, right? that could be good and you can't show it yet. Right. That could be good for like maybe some um, high visibility clients that doesn't want everybody to know, right? So like I could see right that. or like right. If, okay. So the only way I can see that that house is being sold with those boxes checked. So like you can't share it. So it's not anywhere on the internet. It's just like in this private network. It's my private network that I, uh, the only people that can see that are agents that are logging in to look specifically for that. Okay. Right. And you can't show it are people that have already been in it or don't care because you can make an offer on it, right? Sight unseen. Yes, you, you could make an offer sight unseen, but you better document the living snot out of that. Yeah, but you because could. Like, let's you, say you, like, you want to be in a specific neighborhood because it's whatever, right? Like, you have your reasons. And this right. house is like, came up and it's in this neighborhood and you're like, I don't freaking care. I want it. Right. I don't care. And you want to offer. Right. It's because you could make your offer then contingent upon viewing the actual property or not or whatever. Right. But like, if I you want, right. That. So if, if the seller's goal is to get the best deal for them, then this takes away some of that leeway. Right. Because in order now, let me to ask you this though, if you're going to write an offer site on scene, how do you know about that property? If it hasn't been shared, oh. if it can't be shared and it can't be shown. Mm. Okay, so you would have to be the <laughs> no, you'd have to be the listing agent, but you, as the listing agent, cannot share that with other people. No, but you like share that with buyers. Is the agent are buying it? But let's say it can be shared, but it can't be shown because that's really right. That's really the thing that it, it can be shared and people know about it, and it's like coming right. Once somebody knows about it, if they want to make an offer sight unseen, there's nothing that precludes them from right. doing that. But that's the biggest problem is that it's being shared, but nobody can get in, but yet it still goes pending. Right. And I would argue that this scenario that I encountered, it was a, do not share this, do not show this. And then all of a sudden it's gone and sold. Oh, whoops. Right. Right. And I had, <laughs> when I saw the property come up on the private network, I reached out to the listing agent. I said, Hey, can you tell me about this property? When's it going to be available? Um, you know, what's, give me the time frame. Well, it's not ready yet. Okay, okay, great. Well, can you let me know when it is? And in this particular case, I was looking for a property that I myself would want to buy as a potential investment property. 
Okay. So I'm, and I'm explaining in, in this course of several emails back and forth, I'm explaining, I would personally be the buyer, which I would have to disclose also that I could potentially be a cash buyer. Mm -hmm. You know, if it doesn't qualify for financing or the seller wants to stipulate that it's cash only, I could be a cash buyer. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying I meet all these requirements. I happen to see it obviously because I'm an agent. Right. Several months go by and I check in every so often. Then all of a sudden it's gone. Uh oh. It's gone off the market. Uh oh. And I said, okay, so can you can but you fill me in on what's going on? Offer, right? Or no? No, there was no offer because I wanted to see the property. So my my the way I left it was I'll check in with you shortly. You know, keep me posted if anything changes. So all of a sudden it goes, it goes poof. It's off the, off the private listing network. Right. So I reach out to the agent again. This was probably two months later. And I say, Hey, what's the scope of this particular property? And the agent says, well, it's uh, it'll be coming back on in a couple of months. So it was a very vague answer. Mm -hmm. So I pushed for a couple of more questions and my response, the response I got was, why are you asking me all these questions? Right. Well, you probably know why I'm asking you all these questions at this point, because you're doing something that shouldn't be done. Definitely no. Right. Well, except, so, that, except that if somebody had put in an offer sight unseen or they put in the offer contingent on them seeing it, do but how would they know about this house? They really in all, the, in all actuality Unless couldn't share it, couldn't show it. Well, and that's the thing. So the property comes back up on the market with the same agent as now the listing agent of this property post flip. Yeah, now it's flipped, right? Right. So now it's flipped. Right. And then it's like, did they, were they the flipping group or not or whatever? But I mean, well, right. And I would argue then too, that unless this was an office exclusive there, you know, this, this particular property, unless, unless she bought it herself. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Unless the agent bought it herself. That is the only explanation for this. That but based on what I can find, that's not really the case. But even more common, it's like, we are allowed to share it, but you're yes. allowed to go in Exactly. It still goes pending. And assuming that people, yep. if people are buying a sight unseen, that's fine. But like, right. what about you? All of these houses are not being sight unseen. It would be no, absolutely not. So what you have there is you have a problem where agents, listing agents are maybe picking and choosing who goes in to see the property. Mm -hmm. And when you say, can it be viewed? It means it cannot be viewed by an agent as a preview and it cannot be viewed by a potential buyer. So I can't even preview a property okay. if it says no showings. Which makes sense because you can FaceTime people and all. Well, like, right. You, it just opens up the door. So you have, you have situations where, where the agents are picking and choosing who's going to view the property, right. which can be problematic right. or they're making it, um, they're leaving it open to the convenience of the seller. Right. And if the seller says, yeah, I can show it today at this time, but I can't show it tomorrow at that time. Therefore buyer A can see it, but buyer B can't. That's also a problem. No, that makes sense. This is... Why, this is number 872, reason number 872 that I don't like the private network. I see it serves one purpose and one purpose only, and that is for me to at least be able to put other agents on notice that I'm, but this, this seller is under an exclusive marketing agreement, don't solicit them. That is really the only benefit I see to the private network. Yeah, I mean, I guess like, because we don't have the private network in our I belong to a few different MLSs and none of them have that to my knowledge. Did they not have a coming soon then too? A coming they soon have status? A coming soon, but we don't have options like you do. None okay. Do. I'm so how does a coming soon then work in, in your market if you have a property that's coming soon? Well, have you ever seen a shit show? <laughs> All day, every day. <laughs> that's how it works. So it's how it works. It's the wild west. It's kind of dumb. Like I, I kind of like that network thing that you were talking about before, because it's like, right. then we can put stuff up there. That's like, Hey, I know of this property, but it's not like available because then it's like, Oh, cool. But if you can't get into it, it's kind of pointless. It's you know literally I mean? for me to be able to say, I have this under contract, under a listing contract. That's about it. The other problem that I see all the time and is, is very frustrating to me as a, as a buyer's agent is I'm working with a buyer. The buyer texts me at eight o'clock on a Sunday night and says, Hey, I just drove by this property. I'm interested in knowing more about it, but I can't find it online anywhere. Right. So I go to, I go online. They give me the address. I go online and go to the private network and the public network. Can't find it anywhere. So now of course I don't want to call the buyer back and say, well, can you tell me whose name was on the sign? What company it was? Cause I look like a moron. Right. Now I look like an idiot. Exactly. So now I get in my car at eight 30 on a Sunday night and drive over two towns over 
right. to go drive by the house and find out what sign is on the property. Right. That's not allowed. If the sign is in the property, it's, then within 24 hours, it's got to be somewhere where all of us can see it. Right. So 24 hours is all you have. Yeah. And, you know, so I finally was able to figure out who's, you know, because the sign had no name on it either. So now I'm Googling, reverse Googling phone numbers and all this other stuff. Finally figured out whose it is. It gets okay. some information. And I said, hey, you know, by the way, um, you probably want to avoid a fine. So just so you know, it does need to be in the private network. Oh, well, I have all the paperwork for it. Right. Great. Great. Right but, there. but it has to be in the private network. Well, they're not ready yet. Great. You have a sign up. You have 24 hours to put this in the computer because now I look like a jerk. Right. Now right. I look like I don't know what I'm doing because I, I now have to go drive two towns over on a Sunday night to go figure out who's listing it. Right. Is. I mean, I think we can all agree that there is a real problem between signed paperwork. There's a gap oh, God. between signed paperwork <laughs> And the sellers actually being ready to show the property, right? Absolutely. And of course, from a listing agent standpoint, you want to make sure that you secure this. You're not walking out the door of a listing appointment without a paperwork, right. without signed paperwork. So of course, people aren't going to call you to list it when they're ready to go, you know, out the door. Right. We're going to call you and say, okay, now I need to get my ducks in a row. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, and, and that's absolutely fair because we've got professional photos, we've got cleaning, we've got staging, we've got things yeah. to do. Yeah. Right. And we're as agents not going to do those things until we have signed documents. Exactly. So but I feel like we're beating a dead horse. Yeah, I think that that's probably where we need to lead the discussion. Like, what are some possible options for that or i mean what what are the fines for misrepresenting access have you seen cases where that's like because you said it's pretty black and white if you went it's in it's pretty or, black and white right so then right. They're, if they went in they're getting in trouble right generally speaking i'm mean, still going to go to a hearing panel you know the, the the grievance committee is going to get the the complaint they're going to review that and see if there's enough evidence there that they feel it should go to a hearing mm -hmm. and then it'll advance to a hearing a hearing panel will hear everything respondent will show up and give their statement. And then it's the hearing panel's job to kind of sift through everything and see how they feel it, you know, it, it plays out in the end. Okay. Um, it depends on whether or not the person who is in violation of the code of ethics um, is a frequent flyer, repeat offender. Okay. Depending on how many times you've been there, your your citations can be higher. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, well, let's, um, let me tell you, let's take a break from this. My head, okay. like, your head's exploding. I got one word for this, for how to fix this. And we'll, we'll talk about that after your breath. The break. Perfect. So I want to tell you about two of our partners. One is my coach, John Kitchens. He's the best. Do you have a coach or you coach? I do not. I don't. I don't have either. I don't do it. And I don't have one. <laughs> have you ever? I have never. No. Really? I've always no. had a coach, at least one, but yeah. he's great. So um, what he's doing is he is doing like a free business assessment for any of our listeners. So you would go to callcoachkitchens.com slash- Can you say four. that five times fast? No. <laughs> plural call coach kitchens.com slash form and you can type in fight club and you'll get that free assessment and then the other one is monica's um company called ghost poster and what she does is she'll give you like the post like we all know we need to post online right but it's right. and then in and of itself is a full-time job if you want to do it well it is right and mm -hmm. it's like we don't know if you were like me like i didn't know what to post at first now i just post whatever right. like, it takes right. like i would say it takes a good like four to six months to get that figured out right yes to get to get a, a good rhythm down exactly and to like know your vibe you know yes yes yeah so i started using um i started off using monica's um ghost poster thing so she okay. is doing fifty dollars off that for the year so it ends up being i think it's normally like it'll be like 249 or something so it's awesome. uh mycoachmonica.com slash offers and then do fight club as the affiliate code to get your discount excellent those are awesome resources so you literally copy and paste it was so easy <laughs> love it all right so let's go back so we're talking about misrepresenting access coming soon listings, private, all this. Right. Yes. All right. What is your, right. all the things that make this industry make me want to pull my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you one guess as to what my one word is that would fix this whole problem. It's one of your favorite words. My favorite words are dumb. 
<laughs> what would fix up what would fix all of this jen stop it starts, it. With, it starts with an a I'm trying to think i know i'm going to listen back on this and be like yes that was the word right uh not being the czar won't fix it no an apprenticeship would fix this right? oh an apprenticeship because, <laughs> because people would have to have to work under the supervision of someone for a certain period of time before they're cut loose to the world. Yes. You know, I, I, would I think that, that would, that would fix a lot of things. But I also think there is still like a gap in the process of it. Yes. The apprenticeship would fix a lot of things. It would fix a lot of things, but also there, would fix a lot of things is a, is, is curing of a disease called RDR, which is realtors don't read. So if we could fix that, that would also fix the That's problem. just literacy. Right. And well, one would think so. <laughs> be literate read right just yeah. read it just understand pay attention go to your office meetings if you don't understand how something works then just ask the question okay. you know that's why everyone has managing brokers that's know. why that that's why people still will reach out i i have i served as a managing broker for two two different offices mm -hmm. and i still have agents from those offices when they have random questions we'll text and say hey sorry to bother you but blah blah blah, blah. and i said you're never bothering me right i'd much rather you ask me the question Right. And I can give you the answer. It'll take me three seconds. Or you could I'd just rather give you the answer and, and have you not get end up with a fine or have the rest of us look crummy to our clients. Well, yeah. You know, just I'm saying. I'm gonna say, I mean, you could do what I do and just wait for your broker to call you and then ask for forgiveness. Well, you could, yeah. <laughs> and then I want to come over there and beat you with a stick because I can't find that property in the MLS on a Sunday night at nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly i wonder what like if you're listening to this and this has happened to you i'm sure what are your ideas for fixing this because i think it is important that we all know about properties that are coming up right but it's like there is that rub of like if they're coming up but you can't see them then doesn't matter but then what is the point right i mean i we we survived this industry survived a long time without all this coming soon baloney yeah why can't we just go it's clearly too much for most agents to wrap their heads around as to how to do it correctly. It's confusing. Just oh, go back just to simple. It confuses everybody. It confuses everybody. Sit there in a listing agreement, a listing appointment and say, okay, I know you're not ready for two weeks, but we're going to sign our paperwork today. Great. If that was the end of the conversation, it would be fabulous. But instead I have to whip out three more pieces of paper right. and say, this keeps me legal with the state of Illinois and, and, yeah. our, and our local MLS because I can't put this in the computer you know, with, with a, a day one market time in two weeks. Right. So here's a piece of paper for that. Right. If you want me to at least attempt to pre-market or put a sign in the yard. Now here's another piece of paper for that. It's but if you put much. a sign in the yard and you can't show the property, you're just going to piss people off. Oh, thank you. I don't, we don't need to piss people off. We do a good enough job as an industry already. You know what? We do do a great job. <laughs> good job. <too. laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, yeah. just, just, just make it simple. Go back to what it was before all this coming soon, baloney. If you can't see it and you can't show it, what the hell are we need? What do we need to talk about it for? It's not, it's not useful to anyone. You're right. You're right. All right. Rachel for president. I win. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel for president. You always win. win. Okay. Rachel, if any final thoughts or was that it? That was pretty good. That was like mic dropping. Good. We just need to fix it. I mean, yeah. go back to simple. Keep Sign it simple. Petition. We need a petition. Right. Yeah. Um, get rid of coming soon, please. Get rid of coming soon. So Rachel, if people have a referral for you in Chicago or they have a question, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Best way to reach me is via cell phone by a call or text at 630-542-8688 or Facebook. If you want to know the wrong way to do things, call me. At <laughs> Okay. I'm just kidding. I'll just give you the logical, the logical <laughs> way, which is Often and then I'll jack it up with all my forms. The wrong way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 513-400-1691. Thank you, Rachel. As usual, it was lovely. Yes, always a good time. <laughs> Have a good one. You too, thanks.